bullet list, right? So you stack curiosity on landing pages. Here's a, here's a few examples. This is a Rachel Peterson <clears throat> um, landing page, and she's got three fascinations stacked here. A to Z of how to get started with TikTok. My weird hashtag strategy to help me grow by 52,000 followers in one month. Uh, your first 1,000 followers on TikTok, uh, a how-to training. Like just, it, it's, they've just stacked the, the curiosity bullets there. Here's a classic one, this is Dan Kennedy landing page. You can see, I mean, the headline's a, a curiosity bullet, but you can just see he stacked bullet after bullet after bullet after bullet after bullet after bullet. It's like a whole page of bullets, right? And the point of that, if you go through and read all of these, assuming you're the target market, is it stacks curiosity. Curiosity gets more and more and more. Again, this old ad, which is one of my favorites, does the same thing. Curiosity bullet after curiosity bullet after curiosity bullet after curiosity bullet. The table of contents are a curiosity bullet. Um, but the cool thing is, like, if you go and read those curiosity bullets, they're so good that the reader would happily submit their information just to get the answer to one of those things. Not to mention stacking it on dozens and dozens and dozens of time, right? So it's not just they want one thing really, really bad they'd happily submit their, their information for. It's they want 12 things now, right? Like the, the curiosity is stacked to a point where it's like a raging inferno and they have to put it out. That's what you want to do inside of a, a good landing page. So once you connect with their desire, you've made a big promise, you stack the curiosity. This is when you want to start layering in some authority and some trust, right? Because you want to remove the fear, any fear they might have about the quality of the info they're going to be getting. Because you're, you're promising something, they don't know you, you're a stranger. You need to kind of introduce yourself, they need to resonate with you, they need to feel like the sources of this information is going to be good, right? So usually you're going to want to demonstrate some authority and do a few other things to build some trust. And again, this is way important when you're doing a landing page and an opt-in page that is targeted towards people who aren't familiar with your product, which is gonna be most of the time, right? You need to build that authority. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Some of the best ways are to show your track record. So like show your past successes that you've had as a guru, right? And I say you, I'm, I realize many of you aren't gonna actually be running your own business online immediately. You're gonna be helping other businesses to do it. So when I say you, I mean like your clients, you're gonna help, your, you're gonna show your client's track record you're gonna show the other people that your client has helped and you're gonna show their authority by association. So if they're associated with anyone um, that can provide any level of authority to them, right? So let me give you some examples. The Dan Kennedy one, there's a couple of examples, right? In this part, he talks about how he's not some youngster uh, promising to be your savior after watching some videos. He's got a 40 year history as a guru to gurus that talks about you know how good he's done. Look at this whole section here about who's Dan Kennedy talks about all the things that he's done. He's the founder of this magazine. He's taught this for 6 million people around the world, nine consecutive years. He spoke of the success thing alongside Ronald Reagan, Colin Powell, Johnny Cash. Like, so it's just power by association, power by numbers of people that he's helped, proven track record, how many books he's written. Like he's, he's just stacking and saying, hey, I'm a guy you can trust, right? Um, even in this example, right, that we shared earlier, America's number one stock analyst. And this is just the first place he starts talking about authority. There's a whole section of the sales letter where he just stacks this guy's authority and why you should listen to him, right? Um, in this example, there's a couple places, right? They spent a million dollars in ads. A million dollars in ads, like that lends a level of credibility all to itself. Plus, there's a section down here where they show where it's been featured on these different news outlets. There's a lot of different ways to weave authority throughout a landing page, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the sense of certainty that they're going to get what they want, right? So you're making them a big promise. And by layering in some authority and some trust factors, what it's going to do is it's going to give them confidence that they can actually get what they want. So that's kind of the main elements in a, in a landing page. When you sit down to write one, you're usually going to plan out at least those three elements. You might put, put a few new things in, a few additional things in, depending on the landing page you decide to model, right? Because that's the first step you're going to do. You sit down and find other pages that you want to model. But those are going to be the main things. You're, so you're going to sit down and plan your headlines. You're going to plan your fascinations. You're going to plan your call to actions. You're going to plan how to lay, put some authority in there. But if you're... If you're working with a client or you're running your own business and you have to figure out, you know, what you're actually going to offer as bait, you know, that free thing that they're opting in for, um, then there's a certain process. You want to think about things that are going to be helpful to, that, to somebody who's taking their first steps towards their dream state. So you're going to think about the avatar, you're going to think about their dream state, and you're going to think about some of the first roadblocks they're going to run into. You want to create your free value, that free gift that you're offering them to be something that's going to help them with those first few steps along the way, right? Like for example, um, in my landing page is 10 tips to reach 10K a month as a copywriter as quickly as humanly possible. And those tips are valuable information that someone needs to know when they're first starting as a copywriter so they can progress as quickly as possible. It's useful to the avatar where they are, right? 
And again, that's useful because like you want to think about those roadblocks you're going for and usually just giving them information and and helping them understand their situation, what they really want. Like if you can wrap that into a, a, a valuable package, an ebook, a guide, a video or something, that's usually enough to make it worth it for them to opt in and give you their email address and sort of join your world, step into your, your brand, right? Now you measure the success of a sales page based on the conversion rate. So you're gonna have hundred visitors. How many of those visitors actually opt in, right? You know, if it's 25 then you have a 25% conversion rate, right? Um, you want to have as high of a conversion rate as possible for free gifts and free offers. You should shoot for at least a 25% conversion rate. That should be like your bare minimum of what you accept, but you can obviously go higher than that. Um, and obviously like the higher the converting page converts, the more valuable it is to drive traffic to that page. If you drive more traffic to that page, you get more people convert, you get more leads, you can sell more people, right? Um, you want to dial in all those elements, the headline, the, the, the images that you use, the entry, the CTA buttons, all that stuff to ensure the highest possible conversion rates. Um, writing landing pages is extremely valuable. Again, like I said, it's, it's the beginning. It's where you've taken short form copy, you've got the reader to that page. This is where they make the decision whether or not they're going to sort of join your brand or step in and give permission to be marketed to or not, right? So if you can you can do this more effectively than your competitors. You can do this more effectively than other people in the market, then you win, right? If you can help your clients do that, then they win and you make a lot of money. So learning how to write landing pages and really dialing in those three elements, the headline, the entry that you use, and the authority that you drop, that would do the that would do the most for driving the conversions on your landing page and making it successful. So keep those in mind. Nice. 